<laughs> Once again, the thrilling adventures of the shadow, the hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. The shadow in a moment. Now in a moment, the shadow. <laughs> The Shadow, who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret. The hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, The Drum of Obi. Exactly 4.30 p.m., the first roll of thunder broke across the sky. Precisely at that instant, the door of the Heavenly Hope funeral parlor opened, and a lean-faced stranger in a wide-brimmed black hat entered and approached the owner of the establishment. I should like a coffin. Yes, sir? A teakwood coffin with silver handles lined with purple satin. Why, we should be able to make one for you, sir? That won't do. That won't do at all. I need it delivered before sundown. Before sundown? I'll speak to my assistant. William? Yes, sir? This gentleman would like a teakwood casket with silver linings and purple satin lining. That can be arranged, I think. But he wants it delivered before sundown today. Hmm. Well, that can be arranged, too. There's a coffin like that below in the store. You are sure, William? Yes, sir. It just arrived with a new shipment. Excellent, excellent. Glad to serve you, sir. You've served me admirably. Such things are most important to me. You will favor me by making delivery to number eight, Acrestone Lane. Number eight, Acrestone Lane? Yes, sir. There's been a death in your family, sir? Not yet. Huh? I said not yet. I don't understand. It isn't necessary that you understand. Are there any more details? Only for the record, sir, I should like to know whose funeral it is to be. The funeral of Mr. T. Theodore Jedrick II. T. T. Theodore Jedrick II. Make a note of that, William. And now, sir, your name? My name? For the record, sir. My name is T. Theodore Jedrick II. <laughs> Is he insane? He, he didn't look insane. The, the drunk then? Hardly. Look, look how steady he's walking across the street. Steady and straight, is it? For heaven's sake, what's the matter with him? Eh? Doesn't he see that car coming? Look out, sir! Look out, sir! Mr. Jedrick, look out! Let, let me pass, please. Please, let me through. Mr. Jedrick, Mr. Jedrick! Mr. Jedrick, is he? Is he? You may deliver that coffin as specified, William. Mr. Jedrick seems to have known exactly what he was talking about. to listen to the car radio. Can't you get some music? No, I want to catch a special news flash, Margo. But, Mama. No. And so, having ordered the coffin for his own funeral, Mr. T. Theodore Jedrick II of number 8 Acrestone Lane stepped into the street in front of the Heavenly Hope Funeral Parlor where he was killed instantly by a hit-and-run limousine. The coffin was delivered as specified. But there is no answer to the riddle of how Mr. Jedrick was able to prophesy his own death. What do you think, Lamont? I think he ought to be in jail. 
Who? A newscaster for broadcasting such inordinate nonsense. But it happened. It couldn't have happened. Lamont! It may have seemed to have happened, but it didn't. After all, Lamont, you weren't there. Well, I don't have to be there to know that everything has a simple and logical explanation. I don't see how you can well, say... that address they sent the coffin to? Um, number eight, Akerstone Lane. Oh. What? Where are we going? Number eight, Akerstone Lane. Why? Prove you, Margot, that everything has a simple and logical explanation. That must be it there, that house in the cliffside. Uh, ghoulish, eh? An old dark mansion overhanging the sea. Strictly in character. Come on. Lamont, I, I think perhaps we ought to go home. What's remarkable? That, Margo, is the rhythm of Obeam. Obeam? Yes. It's the rhythm of the drums that they play for the rituals of the god Obeam. Who in the world is Obeam? He's a kind of super demon god of the island of Jamaica. It's weird. Hearing it here just outside of town? Nightmarish under the circumstances. Under any circumstances. I think this will be a most intriguing explanation. If we live together. Margo, it ain't hard now one fair explanation. Now, here's the house. Uh, you think you should have done that? Why not? You don't think we should just go our way? Our way lies ahead of us, Margo. <laughs> oh, you'll pardon this intrusion, sir, but we heard about the strange occurrence this afternoon. I will not pardon this intrusion, sir. I want nothing whatever to do with your kind. All kind? Reporters, both of you. Oh, well, we're not reporters. Don't come lying to me. I can smell you newspaper rats. I'm a writer myself, and I know you. Theodore Jedrick was killed. He's dead. He's lying in there in his coffin, and there's an end to the matter. You'll get no further news out of me on the subject. Well, perhaps I can get some news out of you on another subject. Who's beating that drum? And what business is that of yours? It's curious to know why in these civilized parts anyone should be beating the savage ritual of Obi. Obi? Obi, did you say? You are familiar with Obi, sir? I made something of a study of all forms of witchcraft. Well, why didn't you say so at once, sir? Come in. Do, do, both of you. Come in. You will understand, sir. To you, I can explain. Explain? Yes, the circumstances of my brother's death. The dead man was your brother? Yes, Brother Theodore. I am Lyle. Lyle Jedrick. Uh, this is Miss Margot Lane. How, oh, how do you do? I'm Lamont Cranston. I'm delighted, Mr. Cranston. Yes, indeed. Now, about the regrettable incident at the funeral parlor this afternoon. The press and radio have made it sound quite fantastic. It's not supernatural. The power of suggestion can be very potent. Particularly upon a weak-minded individual like my poor brother in the coffin. It was simple for them to make him believe that he was going to die. In fact, he even ordered his own coffin. And then walked directly into the path of the oncoming car. So great was his conviction. And who gave him that conviction? There is a cult of Obi in this country, sir. Small but devout. Led by a man, a self-styled priest, named Leo. Leo? Yes, Leo, sir. And it was this Leo who caused my brother's death. How? How? I'll show you. See here. Look at these. Postal cards. Ninety-two of them. One for each day of the past three months. They've arrived regularly every morning. And the effect was finally too much for Theodore. What do they say, Lamont? Uh, Obi wills it. The house of Jedrick perishes on October 24th. By October 24th, the house of Jedrick will be no more. That's all? That's all. But enough for Theodore. And poor Deirdre. Deirdre? Uh, who's Deirdre? Our sister. Oh. She and Theodore both believed in this savage foolishness. Now he is dead there in the coffin, and she... She is sitting in her superstitious fear in the next room, beating out that rhythm of Obi to ward off the coming evil. <laughs> Why? What does this Leo have against you? Well, the fact that the Jedricks were an old Jamaican family, descended from a long line of Caribbean privateers and pirates, and that I recently wrote a book debunking Obi, calling it nothing more than auto-hypnotic suggestion. And using authenticated Jamaican data to prove my point. It must be quite a book. It is. Oh, it is indeed, sir. Would you care to see it? As a matter of fact, I would. Well, I have a copy of Well, I don't want to trouble no you. No trouble at all, sir. None in the world. Just make yourselves at home. Perfectly at home. Well? Now, you see? Just as I told you. A perfectly simple and logical explanation. Theodore Jedrick believed in this Obi nonsense. 
And so by the power of suggestion, he met his death. In that case, I'm afraid Sister Deirdre is doomed. Huh? Judging from that drumbeat, she's pretty far gone. Yes. Perhaps we can do something about that. What are you going to do? I'm going to try to reason with Deirdre Jedrick before it's too late. Miss Jedrick! Miss Jedrick, we'd like to come in and see you. I don't think she wants to come in and see her. We'll go in anyhow. Miss Jedrick, we want to talk to you. Oh, oh. You are young people. You have time ahead. Go now, for death lives in this house tonight. Miss Jedrick. Obey has spoken. Miss Jedrick, will you please listen uh, to Stop me. eating that drum for just a moment. Let me talk. I beat this drum to keep doom away. When I stop beating it, the hand of death will strike. No, no, you're wrong. The drum isn't helping. It's doing harm. It's heightening your fear, weakening your mind. It's just what Leo wants. What Leo wants? Yes, yes, believe me. Stop the drum just long enough to hear me out. Please. Please. Thank you. Now listen. There is no magic in Obi. The only people that can harm are those people who are fools enough to believe in it. Well, snap out of it. Get hold of yourself and you'll be safe. Like Theodore was safe? No. Like Lyle is safe. He laughs at the curse. And in laughing, he puts himself beyond it. Lyle? Lyle is safe? Absolutely. Are you sure? Yes, Miss Jedrick. I'm completely sure. <laughs> Lyle! Screams came from upstairs here somewhere. Lamont, what, Mark? That window there, the one facing the sea, has been smashed to bits. It must have fallen from here. Jedrick! Jedrick! Listen, it's him. Yes. Crashed to the rocks and sea below. <laughs> out the sea. Come on. Yes, Deirdre's starting with that wretched drum again. I think perhaps we'd better let her. What do you mean? I mean, I'm really getting scared now. You said that Lyle was safe from the Obi magic because he didn't believe in it. Well, he didn't believe in it. But he's gone all the same. Gone just like Theodore. Margo, are you telling me you believe in Obi? Have you got another explanation? Yes. A simple and logical one, I suppose. Exactly. Whatever killed Lyle Jedrick wasn't magic. Well, what then? Murder, my sweet. Simple, logical, old-fashioned murder. But who? Oh, perhaps Leo the priest. You mean that Leo... I mean, it's quite possible that that kind of fanatic wouldn't hesitate. Oh, I hardly think it'll rain. Uh, what did you say? I said, I hardly think it'll rain. I don't... Well, after all, we've had our share of storms this fall, and in my opinion... Here we are, you fools. I saw you when you climbed the wall just now, friend. I saw you duck behind this clump of trees. Oh, no, oh man. Only poor Trump. Poor honest Trump. Go, oh, man, let loose. Let me loose. Stand still. Oh, my arm. Stand still while you still got an arm to cry about. Oh, you hurt me, man. Only Trump. Trump passing by. Yes, we'll see about that. Margo. Yes, sir, I want you to go inside. Get Miss Deirdre. Try to loosen that drum if you have to. What do you want with him? I wanted to take a look at this chap and see if I haven't captured old man Trouble himself. You mean Obi? I mean, I think we're standing face to face with his nibs. The high muckety muck of Obi. Leo himself. Don't stop. I never thought she'd stop again as long as it... As long as she lived. Yes.
Cranston wanted to find a simple and logical explanation for the weird happenings in the house of Gedrick, a bleak castle overlooking the sea. Happenings which appear to be caused by Leo, a Jamaican high priest. Now, while Margot is inside with Deirdre, Gedrick, Lamont holds the high priest captive outside the seaside mansion. Girls be long time gone, man. And um, a step. Yes. Come on, walk ahead of me. Oh, no safe place. Move. No safe place for nobody, man. No safe place for young girls alone. Come on, move. We'll see. Inside. Margo! 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 Listen, man. Margo! Margo! Mr. Deep, what, what happened? He should have been fast. No one left with you to help him. Please don't leave it to us to What? It must pass on to the court to help others. What do lady mean? The treasure! The treasure! The treasure? What treasure? The treasure! It's our family's wealth. Where is it? Nobody. In this, I swear by name of Obi. Who did kill her then? Nobody. Curse of Obi killed all Jedrick. You're insane. No, man. Not insane. You know, understand how Obi works. Obi older than you, older than words. But all this time, and what Obi wills in strange way, is always done. I'll argue with you later. Right now, there's more to be found. Can Leo make suggestion? Well, what is it? Wise men of Obi say that fate leads us the way it wants we should go. Fate has given us keys to treasure vaults below. Let's just go down now and see where fate will lead us from there. Margo? Margo! Girl, not here. It seems very much like treasure is. Look, man. Row of old seats Open one of them. Empty. Open another one. Empty. All empty. Thank you. Emma. Very. Seems almost as if... What's that, sir? Uh... Where? On the floor at your feet. Oh, this. Yeah, let me see it. Hmm. What do you think? Piece of ordinary food, sir. No, 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 that's not all. There's something scrawled on it in pencil. What? Sort of seaman chart. Map of a cove, the shoreline's drawn in, and channel markings indicated. Yeah. What do you think, Mike? Me? I think there's a cove in the beach somewhere nearby. Little known and well concealed. In that cove, I think there may be a boat. A boat laden with treasure. A boat getting ready to sail for parts unknown. <laughs> present, my dear Miss Lane. Oh. Who are you? Wait until I step into the light. There. No. Yes? No, Jedrick. <laughs> the same, dear girl. No. No, it can't be. You're dead. You're dead. Your certainty of my death is a trifle exaggerated. You, you fell from that window. My fall from the window was entirely illusory. You mean... I mean, I faked it. But... Why did you? For purposes of my own. And now, if you will pardon me, I must start the engine. What am I doing on this boat? Oh, oh, that. <laughs> Let's just say that we are going on a little voyage. No. Yes. 
You are going along as hostage, Miss Lane. Just so that I shall have a weapon over Mr. Cranston's head. In case he ever discovers too much and threatens my security. No. Help! No. No. Now, look, my dear. Today, I killed my own brother by running over him in the car. Tonight, I have stabbed my own sister. And I shan't walk too much of killing you. <laughs> <laughs> Who's aboard? Who's there laughing? I am the Shadow. Yeah? Shadow? Where are you? I can't see you. You can't see me, but I'm here nevertheless. Invisible, but on hand to see that justice triumphs over the ugly game you've played, Lyle Jedrick. What game? You've killed off your entire family. Trying to use the smoke screen of the OB curse. Trying to make it appear that not you, but the priest Leo is guilty of all this death and destruction. Well, you're wrong. You're wrong, Shadow. Why should I do such a thing? For the Jedrick treasure. A treasure that belonged to all the Jedricks in common, and that you couldn't abide. You wanted it for yourself, every penny of it for yourself alone. You knew that such a treasure made up of rare and antique coins could have been too easily identified if any of your family were left alive. And so you killed them one by one. It'll do you no good to lie, Jedrick. The Shadow knows. And... What if the shadow does? I have law and decency and civilization on my side. You? You have nothing. This is nothing? Oh, this is nothing, Shadow! It'll come to nothing in the end. We'll see! Oh, let me go! Where are you going? Below. Start the engine. And if you so much as raise a finger to detain me, I shall send Miss Lane along to keep eternal company with dear Dre and dear Theodore. You're not living here, Jedrick. What's that? You're not living here, Jedrick. Leo, you're staying right here. You're staying for now and for all time. Now look, look, Leo. Be smart, fella. Look, I'll, I'll dip it with you. The treasure will be half shares for each one of us. Not treasure I want. Well, what, what then? What can I give you, fella? Revenge. No. Revenge for Obi. Revenge for God. You have made a mockery. Oh, I, but I, I... You, you, you have belittled Obi magic. Use it to steal... Use it to help you in bloody mud and cheap theft. Yes. What I want, you can give me. So. And you shall give me. Revenge. Step where you are. Revenge. Okay, you're desperate. Another step and I'll fire. Revenge. What's the matter with you? Fall. Fall, I tell you. Revenge. Oh. He's on the deck. Don't look. Dead? Yes. Leo beside him. Oh, Ma. Steady. That's the way it had to be. What's that? Going down the deck, that paper. This? Hmm. One of those cards Leo sent to Jedricks. Must have blown out of Lyle's pocket. Obi wills it. The house of Jedrick perishes on October 24th. By October 24th, the house of Jedrick will be no more. Remember. And it's happened. In spite of all the tricks and twists, it's happened. Jedrick, they're all dead. It's the 24th, and the house of Jedrick is no more. Margaret, you mustn't take on your tired and hysterical. Well, what do you call this? It's not magic. Well, what then? It's coincidence. A simple and logical explanation. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know what it is? Yes, I know what it is, Margaret. What is it, then? You want me to tell you? Yes. It's the surf. Booming on the rocks. Is it? Of course. Everything is a simple and logical explanation, Margaret. Now, back to the shadow. is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications Incorporated. All names and places are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. 
Listen again next week, same time, same station, when the shadow will again demonstrate that... The weed of crime. There's Peter Fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> Next week, same time, same station, another strange and thrilling adventure in the shadow's daring battle against the forces of evil. The part of Lamont Cranston was played by Brett Morrison, Margot by Grace Matthews. The program came to you from New York. <laughs>